I knew this episode. I remember this episode. Even after seeing nothing for 12 years, I still remember that damn episode. That episode of Rainbow Dash performs the Sonic Rainboom, much like how my dash he had years ago. At the time, I was still holding my keys, and I dropped them. They clanged on the wood floor. If she didn't know I was home before, she knew now. How long? Dash, she asked me. No motion in her voice. I... How long have you known about this? I... Dash, she turned to me, to look at me. She had been crying, and her mane was in even worse shape than normal. How long have you known about this? I couldn't help it. A tear ran down my cheek as she yelled at me. This was the first time in all these years she had raised her voice to me. And I deserved every bit of it. So I sat down, turned off the television, and told her everything. I told her about the show, about finding her, and answered my, any questions she had for me. There were a lot. Most of them stemmed from the show, to which I simply told her what I truly believed. That, though, she is the Rainbow Dash from the show, that she herself is a different pony from the cartoon. I tried to explain it to her, but her bullheadedness took over and she continued to lash at me. I took it all. I deserved it all. I've been keeping that horrible secret from her for far too long. She's now a fully grown mare, capable of taking, her, taking care of herself if she were in Equestria. Here, I treat her still like she was my little filly. It's been wrong of me, but I couldn't help it. I didn't want this to ever happen, but I knew it would. I should have done what was right, but I didn't. It was only a matter of time before she found out, and she knew she was different. After her argument, she flew upstairs into her bedroom and slammed her door shut. I checked on her an hour later, and no response told me she had flown off. I can only hope that she comes back, or at least if she doesn't. She stays away from any other people. If anything, I hope some sort of portal opens up and goes back, to, and she goes back to her world and never has to think of me again. All I can say to her at this point is that I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. It's been three days since Dad she left. The night I heard departure, I had something I hadn't done in a long time. I went for a walk. I wasn't sure where I was going or how long I walked, but that's what I did. I walked. Now, three days later, I'm finding myself out here walking once again. It's been out for roughly three hours. I've been out for roughly three hours, and though it's only been five in the afternoon, it's grown dark. A storm is brewing, and I soon will be getting hit by the brunt of it. I turn around to begin my walk home, though I don't rush. My energy for these past few days has been non-existent, as I have barely eaten anything more than some toast. I feel so lost as I walk through the woods that surround my home. No. Our home. It is as much hers as it is mine, and nothing will change that. The rain has begun, but I do not quicken my pace. I just walk, much like I had done so long ago. The distant memories of all my pain and sorrow before Dashie began to seep back into my mind. I haven't had these thoughts in years. The pats of water on the tree leaves help keep me distracted. It's a peaceful sound, one you wouldn't hear, never hear in the city. The rain's picking up as my shirt is now soaking wet. I'm sure I'll be sick tomorrow morning, but I don't care. I've been sick for three days now. A mental illness has been tearing me apart. My daughter's somewhere out there, hurting, needing some comfort and warmth in this rain. I wish I could be there for her, even though she may not want me to. She may not ever want to see me again from how she acted. I don't blame her. It must be such a horrible thing finding out your past like that. I can't even imagine what it would be like. I know Dashie is a strong mare and she can pull through, but I also know how she holds a grudge at times. I'm not sure that, even if she did come back, she would ever forgive me. More importantly, if I could even forgive myself. It's now pouring out here. The tree canopies are barely holding back at the torrential rain as I'm hammered by the water droplets. I stop to look around and find my bearings to return home. I'm not lost. Most of this area is easy to, to traverse once you get used to it. It's just, uh, it's just I'm also looking for Dashie as I walk. It's the reason why I'm walking in the forest in the first place. I press on, keeping a steady pace through this rain. Suddenly, I spy a large, thick tree. Its stature sticks out among, amongst the rest, and from looking at the barely wet grass underneath, I can tell its many branches are holding back even in this hard rain. I need to take a break, so I walk under the tree and sit down. The grass is barely wet, with only a few small droplets making their way down. This is the kind of tree I imagined Ashy would hide under in this rain. I wish it to be true, but I saw no sign of her as I approached. I close my eyes and lean against the tree hulk as I think about my life. 
our life together as a father and daughter. We've grown so much as a family and have been, have been fortunate enough to have very few fights. None of them were as heartbreaking as the one three days ago. I feel a tear running down as my cheeks as, as I imagine Dashie's face again. The anger in her eyes mixed with the c confusion just tears me apart. I want so badly to make things right or go back in time and stop it from happening. But I can't do either of those. What's done is done. I'm so sorry. I speak out loud, not caring for no one is listening. I'm alone in these woods, besides the wildlife. In this rain they are hiding as well, and the ones that aren't are far from a being such as I. I'm just so sorry, Dashy. I continue, I continue to cry as I keep my eyes closed and leaning against a tree. The rain continues to pour around me. An occasional drop hits my head, but I don't care. Crack! I open my eyes from the sudden sound and look to my left. I'm shocked at what is I see before me, looking at me with teary eyes herself. Dashy. My little Dashy, covered in burrs and tree sap along her mane and tail, is standing a couple of feet from me. She is wet with both rain and tears. I hadn't, see, I hadn't heard her approach. Then again, being a peg says she was very quiet and light on her hooves. She doesn't speak and instead walks over to me, not caring what noises she makes under her hooves. I don't move. I just sit on the ground and watch with my own wet eyes. She looks so horrible, and yet so beautiful at the same time. Her coat would need a good cleaning, but that was the least of my worries. Without a word, she sits next to me, not making eye contact as she looks off into the woods. I can only look at her, wishing to hug her tightly and never let her go again. But I hold back, knowing that it would be too sudden. Finally, she's first to speak. I... I heard you. Her voice then got quiet as she whispers. And I'm sorry, too. I simply smiled through my tears. Her stubborn attitude was still showing as she always had difficulties apologizing. Dashie, you have nothing to be sorry about. It's my fault. Simple as that. It seems my point doesn't get across as she finally looks to me with a sor sorrowful face. Dad, do you... do you still love me? Now is the time to act. I reach over and grab her, holding her in a tight hug. Of course, Dashie. I've always loved you. I still love you, no matter what. Not even a small fight such as ours could ever change that. She returns the hug as we sit there and cry together. We continue to apologize. Me for the truth and her for raising her voice and storming out. After some time, the rain subsides while we re remain under the tree. Dad? Hmm? Can we go home now? I need a shower. Bad. I let out a chuckle, and she laughs as I stand. We make our trip home. She's uh, smiling again. I am too. I've been giving it some thought. I st think I shall give her her birthday present a little early. A ticket to the Indy 500. Yes, I'm taking her to the Indy 500. She can simply sit on some clouds and watch while I'm in the stands. I didn't even have to get her a ticket, but she needs some sort of reminder of her visit. I'm sure she will have a blast, and though I don't expect to make everything, this to make everything right, I can only hope it cheers her up some. With some time, I'm sure she will relax and settle down about her being in the cartoon. She's a smart mare, and, she, and knows she's real, not that made-up pony from the cartoon. I can only help push her to believing that, and hope she does the same to me. There's a point in every parent's life when they have to let their child go, whether it be for the better or for the worst. It must happen at some point. I now sit here in my living room, by myself, sulking over photographs of my distant memories of me and Dashy. On her 20th birthday, I planned a special outing to go see a flight show. As we prepared to leave, there was a knocking at the door. Never in the years we had lived there had anyone knocked on the door. Hell, we hadn't even made arrangements if someone had, did show up. I simply told her to go to the room for a while I took care of it. Once I heard a door shut, calmly and collectively, I asked who it was knocking, expecting some stranger possibly lost on her, her travels. A female voice spoke up in such an elegant yet attention-grabbing tone I felt myself listening to her with the other uttermost intention. She asked if she may come in question I'd normally refuse within a heartbeat, and yet something about her voice was reminiscent. I couldn't help but walk over and open the door. What I first saw, the figure standing on my porch, I wasn't sure if I was dreaming or hallucinating. Standing there was the radiant and majestic Princess Celestia. I was at a loss of words, fighting both emotions of brony excitement, which I only felt when I was around Dashi, and emotions of, of sorrow, for I knew what this meant. She, she stood there another second looking at me. We matched each other in eye level, her body being the size of a nearly full-grown horse. I stepped back, 
and allowed her to enter. What caught me off guard next was the five other ponies that followed suit. First Twilight Sparkle, then the rest of the gang. Applejack, Rarity Fluttershy, and lastly Pinkie Pie bounced in. Ooh, so this is what an alien house looks like on the inside. Oh my, you have a kitchen! I'm starving. Are you starving? I can make us some. She was stopped by Applejack's hoof. Easy there, sugar cube. We're just here for Rainbow, so we ain't got no time for any eating. Applejack's stomach growled. No matter how hungry we are. I still wasn't sure how to completely react to all this, but not wanting to be rude, I offered some leftovers. Uh, we have some leftovers from dinner last night. More than welcome to, to some. Piggy took that as an okay and ran into the kitchen with some v vigor. It seemed that I did not even need to tell her where anything was. She instantly knew everything was placed, factored to either dumb luck or it simply being Pinkie Pie. I chose the latter. I'll go keep an eye on her, Applejack said, walking to join the hyper pony. As she passed, she tipped her hat to me. I was finding it odd the ponies were not too not more hesitant around a creature such as me. Then again, the same could be said for myself. But having Dashy for 15 years, I grew used to having such a thing around me. Now I have five other ponies and a full-sized goddess horse looking at me with the same amount of curiosity that I held for them. There was a moment of silence as I watched the two mares enter my kitchen and began to rummage through my fridge. I'm quite surprised, Celeste began. I had expected a little more resistance to, our, to us entering. Why? I know who you all are. Celestia nodded. Ah, so you do know then that you're fictional characters from a children's TV show? Then yes. Otherwise, while you're all here, I have no clue. The last part I lied, hoping to keep my mind at ease. I knew the reason, but I wanted to ignore it. Oh, I think you do know. My heart fell into the pits of my stomach. I did know, and she was straight to the point about it. During all these years, I'd anticipated this moment. But as time drug on, that thought slowly dispelled until it was just nothing more than a mere nip in my mind. Minor nip in my mind. That's when it always happens, you know? When everything's finally perfect and you don't have to worry anymore. Um, excuse me, sir, Twilight began, but from what we could figure out, Rainbow Dash should be here. Is she? I looked at the purple mare. I wanted to tell her no, but I knew it was fruitless. She's upstairs in her room. In her room? Rarity asked, surprised. Yes, Dashie's in her room. I wasn't sure who was knocking and didn't want her to be spotted. Dashie? My, my. You're that friendly with her already? Reddy continued. I wanted to punch that pony so hard right then. How she responded insulted me. Friendly? That's not even the beginning of it. And I should be asking you ponies as to what the hell you did. Celestia raised a brow, taking back my charge of change of tone. You see, my student, I know who she is. Get to the chase. I was very short with her. As furious as I was, I wanted to know why they sent Dashie as a filly to some other world. Twilight bit her lip as her teacher continued. Yes, of course. <laughs> she was working... Oh, I'm sorry. She was working on a spell to help the weather team with some storm development. Well, they made slightly too large of a storm, and when Twilight used her magic to try and dispel it, it shot a lightning bolt, meaning her magic. Rainbow Dash was unfortunate enough to be within reach of the blast, and engulfed her and sent her to... Well, here. So we are here to retrieve her. Simple enough, I'd imagine. Before I can answer, Dad, she called from her bedroom. Dad, is everything all right? That second, my heart stopped beating as I looked from pony to pony. Each one's face was in pure shock and confusion. They recognized the voice of the Rainbow Dash, but she said, Dad. Uh, excuse me, Sugar Cube, Applejack started, returning from the kitchen. Did I just hear Rainbow Dash call you Dad? Before I can answer, Celeste started up again. Do you care to explain? I was lost. So many things were running through my mind at once. There was only one thing I could do. I had to do it. But I knew I wouldn't like it. Go into the living, go into the living room and make yourselves comfortable. I'll be right down with her. I didn't allow a response. I turned around and walked up the stairs slowly. Dad? Yes, Dashie. I'm coming up. We... I looked back down to the group of ponies as they watched me ascend. We need to talk. So that's what I did. I told her who was down there and that they were there to take her back. She had seen the cartoon every so often after time, and found the wacky adventures entertaining. She had given up any thought that the Rainbow Dash in the show was her, and only viewed it as another cartoon. As I talked to her and explained that those very ponies she didn't believe in were downstairs, she brushed me off with some laughs. She didn't believe me, and thought I was playing some joke on her, so I took her into, down to the living room. Dashie! Pinkie shouted, jumping onto her cyan friend. Dashie was quick to shove the pink pony off. Hey, get away from me! She was taken aback by the sudden amount of ponies filling her living room. They all looked to her with worried emotions, expressions as to why she shoved her closest friend away.